In this problem, we're told a football is kicked at ground level with a speed of 18 meters per second at an angle of 38 degrees to the horizontal. How much later does it hit the ground? So I'm going to draw an image of what's going on here. So we've got this, uh, it's just going to be our x and y axis basically. So we have this football here and we know it's being kicked uh, with a speed of 18 meters per second at an angle of 38 degrees to the horizontal. So to the horizontal just means from it. So basically we're going 38 degrees this way. And then we have this, our football, right? This is going to be the velocity that's traveling like this. And we know it's going 18 meters per second. And if I draw an image of what it's going to look like, it's going to go something like this. It's obviously not perfect, but just imagine this is how it works. So this is going to be a rough image of what's going on. And so we're trying to find how much later does it hit the ground. So we're trying to find the time it takes for it to do this whole thing. So we're trying to find the time. And so for problems like these, I always want to start with our givens. So given, and so we're going to do this for the x and the y. And so the first thing that you want to do, uh, if you ever have an angle problem, so if you have something traveling at an angle, what you want to do is find the vector components, right? Because when we try and find the initial velocity for our x and our y components, uh, we have to break this vector down first. So if you imagine this is like a triangle, right? So this is going to be x, this is y. What we're going to want to do is find uh, the components. So the way we do about uh, doing that is using trig functions. So if you do the cosine of your angle, in this case 38 degrees, uh, you know cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent of our angle is this side right here over hypotenuse. So I'm going to call it x over 18. If I multiply, uh, this uh, right here is going to be 18 times the cosine of 38. And so that's just a way you can find uh, the x component, the initial velocity. So 18 times the cosine of 38. And so this is going to work the same exact way. It's just going to be 18 times the sine of 38. And so you can prove that too, right? Because we know the sine of 38, uh, it's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this side over this side. So I'm going to call this y. So y over 18, multiply both sides by 18. It's going to be equal to 18 times the sine of 38. So cool, that's going to be our initial velocities for both directions, but let's just write down our given. So acceleration in the x direction is zero uh, almost always. So that's just what you got to know in the x direction. Acceleration is zero. Uh, delta x, which is how much it travels from the beginning to the end. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, we also don't know the time. So time we don't know, but we do know its initial velocity. Its initial velocity is 18 times the cosine of 38, and then it's in meters, right? So meters, and I'll do the y. So y equals, uh, or a for the y acceleration since we're on Earth. Gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Delta y, so our change in y, uh, we don't know, right? So we don't know what it is, or I guess you can assume it's zero, right? Because if you start here, go here, it's not really changing at all, so delta y, we're going to set equal to zero. Time uh, is what we're trying to solve for. So both of these times are the same, right? Because it's just going to the end. So time equals question mark. And then V sub zero, our initial velocity is going to be this right here. So our vertical component, 18 times the sine of 38. And so in order to solve this problem, you're going to use this formula. So you're not going to be using the one we've been using in the past. Uh, you're going to be using this one, V equals V sub zero plus A times T. And so I'm going to explain to you uh, how this works. So I forgot to write down that we have uh, v. So v is going to be our final velocity, right? So the velocity here. And so the trick to this problem, if you're going to take away one thing, is that the final velocity is just going to be the opposite of your initial velocity. So if you have something traveling at an angle like this, and you know the components, the final velocity for each component, or in this case we're using the y, right, is just going to be the opposite uh, of it. So in this case, it's going to be minus 18 sine of 38. And so that's going to be the trick you're going to use to solve this problem. So if you're going to take away something, just know that the final velocity is just going to be the opposite of your vertical component. And so now we've got it like this, right? You should notice that we have everything here in order to solve for time. And so essentially, all we got to do is solve for uh, t and just plug everything in. So if v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. If we want to solve for t, we minus v sub 0. So v minus v sub 0 equals a times t, divide by a. So t is going to be equal to v minus v sub 0 
over a and so we have everything we just got to plug it in so let's go ahead and plug it in so t is going to be equal to v which is minus 18 times the sine of 38 minus uh v sub zero right so 18 times the sine of 38 over a so a is minus 9.8 so we have minus 18 times the sine of 38 minus 18 times the sine of 38 over minus 9.8. And so if you plug this in your calculator, you should get that T uh, is going to be equal to 2.26. So keep in mind, we're using seconds here, right? So T is going to be equal to 2.26 seconds. So the distance or the time it takes till it hits the ground, is going to be 2.2 seconds, 2.26 seconds. And that's how you solve this problem.